So we're in Barcelona for MWC 25, and we're here to talk about quantum safe cryptography, which I believe is one of the most important topics that the industry needs to be looking at and thinking about right now. And I'm here with Luke Ibbotson. He's head of group R&D at Vodafone. And I'm here with Laurie Thorpe, who is quantum safe industry lead at IBM. Laurie, Luke, thanks so much for joining us today. So Luke, can you tell us why this topic is important to Vodafone? And give us a bit of background, because this is something that Vodafone has been working on for quite a few years already, isn't it? Yeah, so we've been interested in, um, in how we might use quantum computers in the future and working with IBM to figure out how within Telpo environment we could use these fantastic machines. But that also means that we are very, very aware of the threats that quantum computing poses to vulnerable forms of cryptography. So the way that we protect almost every aspect of our digital lives today in terms of um, banking or making a phone call or making um, any, kind of, any kind of transaction that involves the assumption that your data is going to be held confidential, is potentially unraveled by quantum computing. So we've been working uh, on an industry basis. We, we set up um, a GSMA industry-level task force called the post Quantum Telco Network Task Force in 2022 together with IBM. And to try and understand what it takes for the telco industry to undertake this this migration towards forms of new forms of cryptography that are safe against quantum attack. Okay. So, Laurie, I think, I mean, we've been working with the NIST standards as well. So maybe um, we'll we chat have, about that. Yeah. So uh, last year, there was a very important milestone from a quantum safe point of view. Uh, the first set of standards of post-quantum cryptography standards were released in August last year. Uh, this is a starting point uh, for, for many activities in terms of preparing the industry for post-quantum cryptography migration. And that a lot of that work is the work that the Post-Quantum Telco Network Task Force has been doing to collect and gather the ecosystem uh, to prepare the standards, prepare the products, prepare the migration strategies that will be adopted um, in order to uh, perform this, this evolution of cryptography. Okay, still seeing quite an awareness gap in terms of people's understanding of what this threat actually is and how long it might take for us to fix it. When you look at the complexity of a telecommunications environment, which relies on a great deal of interoperability between different suppliers, all using different forms of cryptography that we need to be updating. So it's, um, it's a little bit daunting when you start thinking about how deeply embedded this, this stuff is. Uh, it's why we're, we're starting to um, mobilize the industry to plan ahead and make this transition one that is um, was cost effective, but also makes us safe in the right period of time. Okay. But I think mean, fortunately, there are companies that have been thinking about this and working on this for a number of years. IBM, of course, being one of them. Laurie, can you just give us a little bit more uh, background about what IBM has been doing in this space, you know, in recent years? So IBM has been working for many years now on the development of the algorithms. So IBM participated in the NIST standardization process um, over the last 10 years or so. And uh, we actually co-developed the three um, algorithms that have been recently standardized. Uh, that process is continuing because we need more algorithms that are able to meet the requirements of the different use cases. So that, that process is ongoing. In addition to that, um, IBM is also developing capabilities to help enterprises and to help telcos with their quantum safe uh, migration and with their cryptography evolution and management of cryptography going forward. Um, so we've developed a suite of products that will that will help enterprise do that in an efficient way to help automate because we, we believe that the automation component will be really critical in how cryptography is managed going forward. Okay, excellent. Now, I mean, Vodafone and IBM here at MWC25, you have some news to announce about a, a co-development. Can you tell us a little bit about we that? We do, yes. So we've been looking to see how we could make a start on protecting some of our existing security products. So we've taken SecureNet, which is um, the security product that serves millions of customers today. And we started to look at how we can apply some of the remediation techniques that Laurie mentioned a moment ago from this, this toolkit of approaches that might help us expedite the protection of, um, of products in the post-quantum era. So we're very excited to be demonstrating the first uh, prototype of this today at the show so we can demonstrate how our SecureNet product could be made 
quantum safe with the introduction of um, some very, very cool IBM capabilities. And we'll be working on this together for, for a little while there. Uh, and Laurie, who needs to be paying attention to this that might be here at MWC 25? Uh, quantum safe is a journey. It's, a, it's a going to be a long journey. And we want, first of all, we need uh, the executive sponsors to be aware of, of the of the, the, the threat of the threat. Um, we also believe that there is huge benefit in early planning. So that is one of the other aspects that we're, we're trying to raise that, that awareness around how early planning can really benefit an organization um, because this will be a long journey. Uh, it will be potentially quite a, a challenging journey in some cases where um, with, the, with Telco, we've got the standards, we've got the interoperability, we've got some of the challenges of legacy equipment that need to be taken into consideration. And that planning will really help to make that journey less complex and a lot more um, cost effective. So some of these capabilities that we're, that we're trawling, that we're developing are about supporting that journey and underpinning that journey in a way that helps um, telcos, helps enterprises to plan and to manage dependencies uh, in the right way. And if I could just build on that very quickly. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we're very aware of is that our chief security officers and all of their peers across the industry face a myriad of um, complex security cyber challenges every single day. This is one of many. So I think one of the challenges that we have is making sure the awareness is raised to the extent that it is taken in context of the broader security framework that we have to operate in. So I think making sure that we have the right sponsorship for this, that the right funding is in place to do it in a graceful way and not in a, in a panic at the end, I think is very much what we're aiming for. Absolutely. We, we know that some of the use cases in Telco are... are um, are even more challenging in terms of the, the adoption of this type of cryptography. So IoT is, is one example. And as one of the world's largest IoT providers, we're very keen to make sure that we get ahead of the curve and making sure that everything we deploy is protected in the right time frame. So we, we published, maybe we should talk about the, the IoT. The document, paper. yeah. So, so last week we published through the, the Post-Quantum Telco Network Task Force, we published a document that talks about post-quantum cryptography and IoT, which is probably one of the more challenging use cases that that we'll be faced with because of some of the performance constraints that some of the IoT devices have because of the long life cycle of um, IoT use cases. As an example, if we think of connected cars or we think of connected smart meters, um, these are some examples where we know that there are going to be some use case specific challenges that will need to be will need to be addressed as part of that post-quantum cryptography migration. So this document is a starting point for, um, it, first of all, engaging the ecosystem, but second of all, also um, sort of to promote that planning and, um, and in, in both the migration of existing IoT solutions, but also taking into consideration what is going to be required for new IoT solutions that are being deployed. So we've started to set requirements quite early to make sure that we've got the, the, the right degree of agility as we, as we deploy these things. People talk about uh, avoiding creating cryptographic debts, which is what you're doing if you're deploying a solution now that you know is not going to be quantum safe or able to be made quantum safe in the future, you're creating more debt. So we're very keen to consciously avoid this. And as part of the journey we're on to, okay. uh, to make sure that we mitigate against that. Yeah, and... Uh, and one of the exciting things that has uh, that we're also doing as part of that is we're engaging with other organizations. So this paper with IoT, we we wrote that in conjunction with the IoT strategy group within the GSMA. We're also collaborating with 5GAA, the 5G Automotive Association, and that sort of helps to bring the right expertise to the table, but also helps to have a more rounded view around the requirements from the, the wider ecosystem, wider IoT ecosystem. Okay. We work closely with other sectors such as finance as well. So I think there's there's a lot of insight we're trying to get from adjacent industries to help see how we navigate this within the telco. So exciting times and uh, we're making good progress. Well, let's hope by the end of MWC 25, more people are talking about quantum safe cryptography and understanding what it means for this industry. So... Laurie, Luke, thanks very much for joining us today and, and pinning us Thank on you, the right. topic. Thank you. Thank you very much.